Chapter 22 Can Time Fix It? A Few Months Later Hunter I let go of Claire six months ago, thinking I could be a better alpha. I was still trying to do it, but it wasn't exactly working. I missed her. The bond made me crave her presence. But it wasn't only that. I missed her because of her beautiful smile, her gorgeous brown eyes, her delicious body, just her. Hunter, man, what are you doing? I've been talking to you for over five minutes now, but you aren't even listening. You have to do something, bro. Tyler, my beta, said, and it wasn't the first time. I hadn't been the elf I used to be, the elf I wanted to be, lately. You know what to do. Reject that Omega. She is not even here and is already ruining everything. It's like a curse. Max and I growled at his words. We wouldn't reject Claire. Our bond with her was the only thing we could keep, and we wouldn't let go of it. There has to be another way. I can't reject her. I couldn't bring myself to say the damn words, Tyler. Even if I could, Max wouldn't allow me to. Rejecting a mate is a hard blow to anyone. You are not anyone, Hunter. You are a powerful alpha. But I get you can't do it. Rejecting a mate and going against the goddess's powerful magic is hard, but I've consulted the elders. There is another way of you to get rid of the bond without needing to reject her, he added. The elders were thousand-year-old wolves who advised the packs, their alphas, and other ranked wolves when it was needed. They didn't have any power within any pack or among the packs. However, due to their age and wisdom, they were highly respected, and we listened to their words almost always. Though some alphas were too stubborn and only did what they wanted. My late father disregarded the elders' advice and ended up almost destroying the pack. What do you have in mind, Tyler? If you take a chosen mate, have sex with her and mark her as yours, your bond with the Omega will be broken immediately, he said, looking at me resolutely. I narrowed my eyes at him. I don't want a chosen mate, I grumbled. My voice had the undertone of another growl. I was always in a bad mood lately. It's for the pack, and in the long run, you'll see that it was the best decision. You just have to find the right Luna, a powerful female from a strong bloodline, maybe even the princess, he exclaimed. The princess will wait for her fated mate, like any other female. Then we have to find a female who has given up waiting. You know how hard it is to find a fated mate. Many give up on it. We should start looking for the right she-wolf, uh, an alpha or a beta's daughter, Tyler said, looking thoughtful as he placed his fisted hand over his chin. I don't know, Tyler. I'll find another way. I'll get back to being myself soon without a chosen mate or anything. You need a strong Luna, even if you were in your best shape, which is not even the case at this moment, man. Besides, having such a Luna as a leader, it would help our pack to make further connections, to grow and develop. It can wait, I replied, inhaling sharply. I was growing impatient with this talk. To hell with a chosen mate. I didn't want or need anyone right now. I would get back into shape soon. I just needed a little time. I just had to push myself more, focus more, work more, fight more. We will, no chosen Luna required, Max chimed in. I knew I had to choose a powerful and well-born Luna at some point, but it could wait some years. Alpha Fergus's daughter, for example, has been looking for her fated male for more than two decades. She is growing tired of it. I'm sure she would accept your proposal if you tried. Max let out an annoyed growl at it. Fergus was the most unbearable alpha, and his daughter couldn't be much different. This conversation is over, Tyler, I said, as I stood up and left my office swiftly. Fergus's daughter? Hell no! I went running off in Max's form to let off some steam, but it wasn't enough. I went to the training parlor and sparred with some of the enforcers two at a time. 
One of the enforcers threw a blow at my chin. I didn't dodge in time. Hell, my pack would start to think I was a weak Alpha. I had to get back to normal soon. Come, Alpha, you can do better than that, my Gamma Stefano chimed in. I knew I could. Don't be such a puppy. Hey, Max, has someone beaten your tail, poodle? Stefano teased. It was that kind of Gamma. He knew that poking at my pride, hurting Max's pride as an alpha, was the best way to push me, to push me to knock these wolves out. Max growled loudly, and my fangs grew, grazing my bottom lip. We glared at Stefano menacingly, letting him know he would be next. I defeated the enforcer after a couple of minutes. With a double kick and a couple of powerful punches, they both were on the floor. I gestured for Stefano to come forward and took a fighting stance. Max's wolfish grin was reflected on my lips. You will see who is a poodle puppy, you chihuahua, I said. I jumped as high as I could and kicked him in the ribs. Damn, Hunter, he grinned. I dropped and landed a couple more punches. Truce! I take it back, he exclaimed. Now I was the one grinning. I was already getting back to normal. I just had to push harder. Focus on this pack. This pack was what mattered most. My wolves, my people, my legacy. Knocking them out felt good, but it wasn't enough. I still felt something was lacking. I still had more steam left to burn. In times like these in the past, I would just find a pretty she-wolf and have her in my bed. But I hadn't done it lately. I knew Claire would feel it if I fucked someone else. Claire would feel pain. I couldn't do it to her. So, like a teenage pup, I was just jerking off lately. Fuck life! Claire. So, you want my help to train? Are you sure? Tor asked me, not for the first time. I sighed impatiently. We were at the training parlor. Ever since I'd ridden Max's back and heard my wolf's muffled growl echoing in my throat, I was adamant to meet my wolf. I had to feel the freedom of running, of connecting with my animal spirit and waking her from a deep slumber. If I trained a lot, if I became stronger, I might be able to pull my wolf spirit from the depths of my mind and soul to bring her to the surface and to shift one day. Not many Omegas had achieved it, but I guess not many wish to shift and have their wolf as much as I do. Maybe this way I would feel less lacking, less incomplete. Maybe this way I would miss him less. Tor, seriously, I replied. Why don't you try sparring the other females? It would be easier for you. They know better how a she-wolf's body works how to compensate for a lack of muscular strength with agility. He reasoned. He was right. An average male wolf was much bigger and muscular than a female, so the fighting tactics should take those differences into account. However, it wasn't as if I had an option. They don't want to train with an Omega. I trailed off. I tried asking other she-wolves to help me, but that only made them laugh. I could ask Sarah for help, but she never trained. She wasn't the fighter type. This Omega will be kicking ass soon, Claire. He grinned. I smiled at him. Tor was the best. I was so relieved that I had convinced him. At first, he didn't want to train with me, because he was afraid of hurting me. Tor was a big male, and an alpha, six foot four feet of muscle. First, you have to learn how to defend yourself. Take a fighting stance, one leg in front, the other one back. Stretch your arm, like this, Tor said, as he took my right arm and put me in position. Our eyes locked for a moment. His beautiful green eyes were shining a teasing smile. It would be much easier if he was my mate. We could be happy together. He wouldn't judge me or think less of me because of my lack of rank. But the fates didn't make that happen. Hey, Clary, are you still here? He asked. I think I zoned out for a moment. I had often been like that lately. Lost in thought, and said thoughts were always going in the same direction. Were always about the same sexy alpha male and his piercing gray eyes. 
I sighed. I'm here. Teach me more. I mustered a small smile. He nodded. Okay, now let's run. To be a good fighter, you have to be fast and in shape. Work on your resistance and stamina. He wrapped his hand around my arm, and we walked to the running track. I was so happy he was around the royal pack. I hoped he stayed longer this time. After I finished running and did a couple of exercises, I went to my room to take a much-needed shower. When I left the bathroom, I came across my mother. She was in my room waiting for me. Besides studying, are you fighting now, Claire? For the goddess sake, child. Not even Omega males fight. We weren't made for that. Stop denying what you are. Stop pretending you aren't an Omega. I can't see you doing it anymore. You will end up ruining your life. My mother said, her words laced with disappointment and impatience. How did she even know I was training? I wondered. That was when my eyes found the training clothes that I had left over a chair to wash later. I was sick and tired of her negativity. There was only so much I could take. You don't have to see me doing it anymore, mother. Don't worry. I won't bring you any more frustration. In fact, I'm definitely moving to the medical wing of the palace. You don't have to bear with me anymore, I said, swallowing a couple of tears. I left before she had a chance to reply. I'd been avoiding being around my mom lately. I thought that would help our relationship, but the distance I'd put between us, unfortunately, wasn't enough. I had to cut relations with her for some time, for my own mental and emotional health. I was already suffering, missing him. I didn't have to be further talked down to and criticized on a daily basis as well. It hurt me a lot, but I had to do it for myself. I had been sinking myself into my studies lately, and now that I decided to train every day, I wouldn't have time to feel bad, to miss him. The mate bond was both a blessing and a curse. The fates were architects of chaos. The goddess had no heart in her chest. Nevertheless, I had to fight to pull myself together and let time heal me, to be stronger and self-sufficient. Chapter 23 It's a date. A year and a half later. Claire. I was training with Tor. He came to the Royal Pack even more often than before, and he helped me train every time. We had been training for 18 months, and I was improving slowly but consistently. I had improved and became much faster and able to defend myself, at least when I was focusing on it. Come on, Claire, you can dodge my movements better than that. Use your size in your favor. You won't reach your wolf this way, he said before his fist touched my belly. It didn't hurt. He never put any power into his blows when we were fighting. He didn't want to harm me. I'm trying, I said between gasps. I was exhausted. I trained every day from 5 until 8.30 a.m., just like the enforcers and the ranked wolves did. After training, I normally showered, went to the pack clinic, and worked until the afternoon. It was a hard routine, but it was paying off. Somehow, it made me feel a bit closer to my wolf. It also kept me busy, so I had less time to think about it. I completed my nursing studies and became a real nurse the previous month. Tor and Sarah were very proud. Even the Luna Queen came to congratulate me and remarked how great my achievement was. But it felt incomplete. My mom, my family weren't there. He was nowhere I could see, I could feel. Tor and Sarah had been of great help. They supported me a lot, as always, but it wasn't enough. I jumped to the side, crouched down, and hit Tor's leg. Honestly, every time I was able to touch the mighty Alpha during our training was a little triumph. Well done, he said as he pulled me up by my hand. Let's call it a day, he added. No, just a bit more. I asked as I wiped the sweat off my forehead. 
What have I told you about overdoing it? He asked, raising a brow. Even when he was serious, he seemed so cool and sweet. I didn't know how he could be so nice after everything he had been through. Tor's life hadn't been easy at all, but that wasn't my story to tell. I know I shouldn't. It's counterproductive. But a bit more. It's the only way for me to wake up my wolf, to bring her to the surface, I replied. Please, I added with a little pout. He inhaled sharply. Okay, Claire. You know I can't resist that face, but only for half an hour. Sore muscles won't make your improvement any faster. I smiled, and we tried a couple moves. He was right. I was overdoing it a bit. But I could feel my wolf getting closer to the surface. I had to push harder. I had to meet her. That was the only way I'd feel less incomplete. I was about to launch at him when I lost my balance and almost fell on my butt. But Tor took me into his arms before my body could crash with the hard surface of the floor. Our eyes locked for a moment. His green eyes were so beautiful and full of light. They were always smiling. My gaze went down to his full pink lips. Oh, goddess. I was out of my mind. He was only a friend. A very good friend. We stayed like that as if we were frozen for a few heartbeats. Hmm. Uh, Claire. He muttered. Hmm. I wasn't making any sense. Only feeling lost in the moment. Hmm. Uh, are you okay? He asked. I'm fine. I'm only a little dizzy. I muttered, trying to get a grip and pulling myself together again. He chuckled. <laughs> I told you not to overdo it. Tor, I... I started, even though I didn't know what to say. My thoughts were blurry and messy. I wished it was only because of my dizziness, but I knew that wasn't the case. There was something in his green eyes. They weren't like the magnetic gray ones that haunted my dreams, but they had their own warm and soothing beauty. You are tired. You should ask Sarah to take the morning off. His voice was laced with worry. I should be with someone like this, who really cared about me, who supported me and could see me for who I truly was, beyond any titles and ranks. No, she's counting on me, I replied forcing my mind to get back to reality. My giddiness took me to a daydreaming state. To have you tripping over and falling onto the patients? Come on, take a few hours off and we'll meet for lunch. I'll ask the cook to make your favorite. I don't know. I trailed off. Come on! You and me, lasagna and ice cream, what could be better? He asked with a sweet smile. Okay, I mumbled. His arms were still around me, which didn't help snap me out of my confusion. It's a date, then, Tor replied as he finally put me on my feet. Go rest, he added, before he left with another one of his smiles. It's a date. Hunter. I finally agreed with Tyler's plan of picking a chosen mate. Thus, he invited the ranked, unmated females to spend the day in our pack. It was a ridiculous idea, but I needed to have a chosen mate soon. It was not something I could delay any longer. It was the only way for me to break my bond with Claire, to let go of her and find peace. It was the only way for me to be the strong alpha that I was two years ago once again. If I remained the way I was, I'd be the ruin of the Black Forest Pack. Time didn't make things better. Nothing could make it better. Just her, or just letting go of her completely. If shit was like this without an Omega as a Luna, it would be much worse if it happened. I would lose the respect of my packmates, which I had fought to gain and maintain. The pack would lose the respect of the other Alphas for good. An Alpha couldn't ever be seen as weak. It would mean his ruin, and the ruin of his pack. That happened to my father. I had to rebuild the pack and its reputation, and fight a lot to gain their trust and build my reputation as an alpha, to convince them that I wasn't like my father. My father took a long time to find my mother, his mate, 
If very powerful beings take centuries to find their fated mates, there was the risk that death would start growing in them and spreading its darkness, corroding their souls. Only the mate bond's magic could avoid such a process. That was also one of the reasons all the supernatural beings treasured the mate bond a lot. The process was faster in some than in others. The weak ones bent to the seduction of death and darkness quicker. The strong alphas, like myself, didn't fear said darkness. We would fight it, and put the pack first, and rely on the loyalty of our betas, gammas, and pack members to share this burden and multiply our power. That was why many alphas took chosen mates when they couldn't find their fated mate. Werewolves were the only species of supernatural beings who had the habit of taking chosen mates. Other supernatural beings faced their inner darkness by themselves without having a pack to back them up. That was why they lost the battle against death and darkness earlier, while alphas had our packs to rely on. We were a collectivist species. We shared our burdens and blessings, and we thrived that way. That way we didn't succumb to darkness. We had nothing to fear. My father was a weak wolf. He couldn't understand the sense of collectivity, loyalty, and put the pack first. That was why his darkness started consuming him quite early, and when he met my mother, it was too late. She couldn't cure his darkness and heal his soul. He ended up breaking her heart and shoving her away. After she left, his state only worsened. It bordered on madness. He started using all the pack's resources for himself, abused alcohol, and partied. He betted almost all Omega females of the pack. Most of them felt honored and took advantage of the large share of luxury and excesses he provided them as his lovers. That was why I swore to never take a lover until I met her. Are you ready, Hunter? The females have already arrived. They're all Alphas and Beta's daughters, the highest-ranked females in the realm who are willing to take a chosen mate, Tyler said. Hunter, you are so lucky. Many females are here for you. You are like the Bachelor. If I were you, Stefano started, but I silenced him with a stare. I had no patience for his nonsense anymore. This was already hard enough. The four she-wolves came here to get to know me. It didn't mean that all of them would be eager to become my mate and Luna. However, all four of them had waited for their fated mate for decades and gotten frustrated. Thus, they were settling for a chosen mate. Although I didn't think they were annoyed that, besides a potential chosen mate, they had the opportunity to become the Luna of a strong pack. I stood up from my office desk and was about to leave when Tyler stopped me. Hunter, let's toast first, he said, as he poured some wine into three glasses. I took my glass and wrapped my impatient fingers around it, only wanting this shit to be over. I just needed to find the most suitable she-wolf, mate, and mark her as soon as possible to sever the bond that was ruining my life and my pack. To the Black Forest Pack, Tyler toasted, and we all let out howls. Our pack was what mattered most. To the pack! Chapter 24 New and Old Lovers Hunter The four females were in the garden when we arrived... They all turned and looked at me. That felt ridiculous. I decided I was leaving. Come on, man. It isn't so bad. It's the easiest way for you to find a suitable Luna for our pack, Tyler said, as he placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder before I had a chance to turn around and go back to my office. I knew he had good intentions, but this was going too far. I exhaled sharply. <sighs> for the pack... I had to do it for the pack. Hello, ladies, Stefano greeted them. As you know, this is our alpha, Hunter. Those lovely ladies are Katie, Adrian, Sunday, and Floor, he said. 
gesturing to each of them. All of them had a social smile on their faces, all but Adrienne. I thought I'd seen her once or twice before. She was an Alpha's daughter and a strong, fierce female. She was beautiful, with bright hazel eyes, a lush, curvy body, flawless caramel skin, and short, curly hair. Adrienne looked at me from head to toe, making me feel uncomfortable at her not-at-all discreet evaluation. I felt like a product in the market. Hell. So that's him? He's not really in shape for an alpha. I expected more. She said with a small frown. It was ridiculous to be under the scrutiny of these females I barely knew. Max growled loudly at her comment, but she didn't seem phased. He has been through some hard days, but he is an excellent alpha and needs a strong Luna to regain his previous shape. Tyler intervened. Was that idiot selling me? Max growled at him, and I felt my fangs extending. This stupid meeting, this stupid idea of Tyler, was only enraging us. I don't think I'll wait to see. Thank you for the invitation, but I am out. Adrian replied with a polite smile. Max was about to lose control. We had never felt so humiliated, not even in my father's times when he used to belittle me. What the hell, Tyler? I growled through our mind link. Alpha's daughters, you know, let her go. Three lovely she-wolves, pure Luna material, are still here. He mind linked back. Nice to meet you, Alpha Hunter. I'm Katie Lupai, daughter of the Beta of the New Moon Pack. The brunette smiled. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Sunday Conan, Alpha Lucian's daughter. The beautiful small brunette smiled as well with a curtsy. She was the daughter of a very powerful Alpha, and it ran in her bloodline. Sunday would make a great Luna. Stefano couldn't stop looking at her. He seemed fascinated by her deep blue eyes and cute face, and she was returning all the attention he gave her. As far as I could tell, this she-wolf appeared lost to me. I'm Floor Beta Lorraine's daughter, the black-haired she-wolf said. They were all pretty and looked like Luna material. They definitely had everything they needed to be a great leader and make this pack prosper. But they weren't her. Ladies, let's talk over a glass of wine, Stefano said excitedly as he took Sunday by her hand. It seemed like he was the one looking for a mate and had already found her. I should have been mad, but I would just let them be happy. Stefano was a good gamma, and he could make this female happy. Wine? That's a great idea. Sunday giggled. Tyler and Stefano started talking to the three she-wolves. The three of them seemed smart and had good knowledge of how to manage and lead a pack. Hunter, are you even here? You are not saying anything? Tyler mind-linked me. I was getting sick of it. Max and I only answered with a low growl and Tyler bared his neck in submission. It was better that way. The way he was pushing me was enraging. It seemed like he had forgotten who the Alpha was. If he wasn't like a brother to me, he would be in trouble. What the hell? This idiot was almost pimping me. Alpha Hunter? Katie's soft voice attracted my attention. The dimwit Tyler was right. I wasn't actually there. I've heard about the great work you did in this pack after the late Alpha passed away. It was indeed remarkable, she added with a smile. Thank you, Katie. What do you do in your pack? I help my parents with managing the training and patrols. However, what I enjoy most is dealing with the pack members and getting involved in the daily issues of the pack, she said. I liked her mindset. I was a very hands-on alpha. I tried to get to know every one of my pack mates and call them by their names. It takes a great leader to care so much for his people, she smiled. We talked a bit more and walked together through the Black Forest. Tyler and Stefano had planned a whole day of activities for the she-wolves to get to know the pack and to get to know me. The ladies were impressed by the lush and large forest surrounded by rivers and small springs. Our pack's lands were of high quality, and their location was also very convenient, in the core of the realm. These favorable conditions facilitated our economic and political relations with all the packs. However, 
It had a downside. Some greedy alphas wanted to have our goods, our remarkable wood, and even pieces of the land for themselves. That was one of the reasons the Black Forest Pack could not show weakness. We had to keep strong to keep the avaricious eyes away. I've heard the pack made a trade agreement with the Pixies, Sunday observed. Tyler stared at me. Claire's and my visit to the Pixie Lands cost us a lot of wood and other goods. Yes, we are a very diplomatic pack, Tyler remarked. Why don't you take one of them as your chosen mate? Get a life, man, I asked Tyler. Maybe this way he would stop annoying me. He needed something else to do. After we have the right Luna, I'll start looking for our beta female, he mind linked back. You have a beautiful pack, Alpha Hunter. Katie smiled as she laced her arm around mine and we walked side by side. She was a very pleasant and smart female. We were walking for a few minutes when I felt a sudden sensation of uneasiness, a pang in my heart. Max released a low growl, which was followed by a pained howl. Claire. Claire. After spending the rest of the morning in my bed, it was time to meet with Tor for lunch. I was currently living closer to the medical wing on the castle, instead of the third floor with the other Omegas, with my mom. I didn't see her that often anymore. It pained me, but also brought me a certain relief. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened in the training parlor, the moment we shared. Did he feel something too? It was hard to say since he had always been nice and sweet. I needed to stop overthinking it. It never helps. I put my jeans and my tank top on and went to meet him in one of the guest houses. He always stayed there when he visited. I went there. He was waiting for me at a table in the garden. We wolves loved doing everything outside. Eating, jogging, some even mating. He pulled the chair for me to sit. Good that you rested. Tor smiled. His bright, beautiful smiles always made his eyes crinkle at the edges. I had rested, but my mind didn't. I couldn't stop thinking about this morning. We had a great lunch. My confusion and the feeling of awkwardness almost faded away completely. Let's walk a bit around. Tor offered, and I agreed with a nod. This side of the pack was quite beautiful. One of the wonderful Luna Queen's gardens was near, and I always like to see it. Every time it's a bit different. Different colors and fragrances emerge. Our Luna was an alchemist, and probably a fairy at heart. Thank you for everything, Tor. I said before we parted ways. I had to go back to the medical wing soon. He engulfed me in his warm embrace, wrapping his strong arms around my back. I look up at him and we both were once again lost in the moment. Tor leaned down, and our lips brushed lightly against each other, before I parted my lips for him to welcome his kiss. After a few heartbeats, he pulled me away gently. Claire, we shouldn't. It doesn't feel right. I'm Hunter's friend and your friend, he said as he put some distance between us and rubbed the back of his neck awkwardly. Tor, I don't owe Hunter anything. He was the one who shoved me away. Not only once, not only in one way. I replied, frustrated. I was not Hunter's. He didn't want me. Yet even in his absence, he prevented me from moving on with my life. I would love it if we were fated mates. You are the greatest girl I know, but we aren't. Just think it through. I don't want you to regret it later. I don't want to act guided by passion and end up hurting you or myself. I didn't want him to hurt. Not at all. He already had more than his share of tragedy in this life. What happened when he was a pup? It was dreadful. He was right. I should think it through. Nevertheless, I was tired of thinking everything through and I was more than tired of thinking about him. Why did it have to be so hard? You're right, Tor. I'll think about it. I replied with a tight smile that didn't reach my eyes. My eyes held only the cloudy sensation of confusion and nostalgia. Nostalgia of a time I couldn't ever live. Of a love 
a bond that could never grow. Sarah's waiting for me. I'm going. Thanks for the lunch, I said before I left. I was confused and feeling an overwhelming sense of uneasiness. I just hoped that whatever would happen or wouldn't happen between us would not destroy our friendship. Chapter 25 Rose Claire I made my way to the clinic. Sarah was seated at her desk, looking at some papers. What happened, puppet? Why do you look so gloomy? Are you still feeling bad? She asked as she quickly walked over to me and wrapped me in a hug. I kissed Tor. I muttered as I sunk further into her embrace. Oh, baby girl, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's a better male than Tor. Not even the Alpha King or our Beta. But a fated mate is something different. My dear girl... No one can love you as your fated mate can. It's a match made by the goddess. It's the perfect love. He holds the other part of your soul. Claire, no one else will be able to make you feel as complete. The same applies to him. He could have the goddess herself as his mate, and Luna, and he would still feel like something was lacking, missing. But you aren't with your fated mate. I'm sorry, Sarah, I didn't mean to be insensitive, I said as I cast my eyes down. I was so confused that I was even saying the wrong things to the person who was always by my side. It's not the same, Claire. I don't have an option. My fated mate died long ago. I just found a way to happiness again with my Cassie. I know that is not the same connection that I would have had with my dead mate, but I love Cassie a lot. You have the option. You have a golden gift from the goddess still in your hands. Open it, Sarah advised. I sighed. I wish it was that easy. I don't have it in my hands. He left. He said he didn't want to be close to me. He did it for his pack. It was noble, and it's what a good alpha is supposed to do, to sacrifice himself for his pack. But it also broke my heart and took the goddess's gift away from me. I explained. He will come back, Sarah assured. I'm not the kind of female that sits and waits for a man to make up his mind and decides he wants me back, I replied. I know you aren't, baby girl. You better make him work his ass off to wow you, Sarah said with her characteristic long and contagious laughter. I didn't think Sarah was right this time. I knew Hunter wasn't coming back. I was not willing to wait for someone who wasn't sure if he wanted me or not. Not to mention what he had to sacrifice for me. His pack? It wasn't fair. But in this situation, there was no way it could end up fair to everyone. Oh, goddess. What have you done? Hunter. Hunter? Are you okay? I heard Katie's worried voice and blinked twice, trying to recover. If I showed any weakness to these ranked she-wolves, my pack and I would become the joke of the realm. Worse than that, it would show that my pack didn't have a strong leader, which in turn would attract the vultures, the greedy alphas, and even rogues. Yes, I'm fine. Floor also strode closer to me. Oh, goddess. Who are you? I hope you're fine. You must be overworking yourself. Her dark and warm eyes were filled with concern. I am fine, Floor. Thank you. I smiled at the sweet female. I knew what that fucking pang meant. Claire was with someone else, but she didn't have sex with him. Otherwise, this ache would be a strong pain instead. We have to find Claire. Remind her she is ours. Max growled in my mind. We can't. We're about to find a Luna, I replied to the semi-feral wolf. We got Claire now. Show her that she is ours. These other females can wait, he barked. Max was enraged and I was about to lose control and let him go to her. But I couldn't. The pack had to come first. 
I shoved the mutt to the back of my mind and gathered all my strength to resist the basic instincts that begged me to go and retrieve Claire, to punish her for having done it, fuck her, and punish her again. Katie beamed a polite smile. Maybe he needs a little bit of wine. Alphas are always so tense. Sunday remarked. Alphas bear a lot of responsibility. That is why having a powerful Luna by their side is fundamental. Floor added with a charming smile. Indeed, Tyler replied, smiling at Floor. He walked closer to her and they started talking. I inhaled deeply, calming myself and my wolf down, at least enough to be able to get through the day. Soon it was time for the next agenda of the day. The she-wolves and I would shift to our wolves to see how Max would connect with them. Having a good connection in the wolf form was fundamental for any chosen mates to work. I saw Adrienne approaching our group fast. What was she doing here? I thought she was long gone by now. Hello, I'm not back for him. I'm just walking around. The Black Forest is breathtaking, Adrian said. Suit yourself, I replied, containing a sneer. The nerve! I went behind a tree to shift to Max's form. I didn't want to show my dick to everyone and have a repetition of what happened in the Pixie Lands. Max growled at this thought. Tyler was already showcasing me like a toy wolf. I didn't need to add to this fucking shameful day. Katie's wolf, Rose, was the first one who attracted Max's eyes. She was a beautiful chestnut wolf with two red patches just below her head and bright green eyes. Her fur looked lush and soft. She was alpha female sized, which was quite remarkable for a wolf of beta lineage. She must have some alpha blood as well. Rose was quite a unique beauty. Max walked towards her and she gazed at him. She had a wolfish smile. Her face also showed her approval. Max's eyes trailed to the three other she-wolves. Floor's wolf, Petal, was very pretty and delicate. Her soft brown fur and honey-colored eyes made her look warm and sweet. But it was deceiving. She was also a fierce and strong she-wolf. Adrian's wolf amethyst was also beautiful. Her fur was brown with white patches and her eyes emerald green. She looked majestic and imposing. I couldn't expect otherwise from her. Sunday was as pretty in her wolf form as in her human form. Her wolf, Koinen, was white with gray boots and gray ears besides her piercing blue eyes. She was just like the wolves in the legends, a legitimate descendant of one of the most traditional alpha bloodlines. I was surprised Max wasn't drooling over her as well. Stefano's wolf couldn't take his eyes off Sundays. I was quite sure they would disappear for some time and lift some leaves while we were wandering around the forest. Many alphas would consider it a challenge to their authority, but I didn't care. Max closed the distance between him and Rose and gestured for her to follow him with his muzzle. They started running around together, leaving the meadow behind and going further into the black forest. Max halted for a moment and rubbed his side against Rose's. It was a great sign for my antisocial wolf. Shut up, Hunter. I am a social leader. He chimed in my thoughts as he usually did. The mutt didn't even make sense. Social leader. As I watched them interacting from the back of my mind, Max played around with Rose. They circled and caught one another as they shared friendly growls. They picked up speed and went down to the small lake in the core of the forest. Rose languidly lay on the riverbank, looking at Max and inviting him to join her. Soon, he lay beside the chestnut-furred she-wolf without touching her. When he was around Claire, even though she wasn't in wolf form, Max was dying to touch her as much as he could. But if we mark Katie as our mate, our connection would grow. But never like with Claire, my wolf chimed in. I couldn't even think by myself without his interference. He was right. Of course not. No connection was like the one shared by fated mates. Rose was a very beautiful wolf, and I could see that Max was getting along well with her. They remained there, resting comfortably alongside each other and looking at the first sunset lights. 
It was beautiful on this side of the forest, and I could see that Rose was enjoying it as well. I was trying to catch Max's thoughts about Katie's wolf in our shared mind. He felt much better around her than around Sundays and Floor's wolves. It was undeniable. He didn't even mind the other two she-wolves that much. However, I could still feel a slight hesitation towards Rose. I like her, but she isn't Claire's wolf, Max told me. Claire is an Omega, Max. She doesn't have a wolf. Her wolf is dormant, buried very deep inside her mind as if it didn't even exist. It's Katie's wolf or no wolf. He started pacing in my mind in response. He got very agitated. Not true. I can feel her, he replied, to my utter shock. Wait, could he feel Claire's wolf? Chapter 26 The Arrangement Hunter I was against the idea of finding a chosen mate, especially because of her, of my typical Omega, Claire. But she was still an Omega, and she had seemingly moved on. The worst was that I could feel it. It affected me more than I cared to admit. Fuck! She was with another male! The thought made me want to break things, made me want to have his blood. She had moved on. I should do the same, forget her and focus on Katie. She was perfect for this pack. Thus, I had invited her to stay here for a few days while the other she-wolves went back to their packs. Except for Sunday, she stayed with Stefano. Those two had been attached at the hip since they met. I was working in my office when I caught Kate's fruity scent and heard her knocking. You can come in, I said, as I stood up and moved from behind my working desk, taking a couple of big steps towards Katie. Alpha Hunter. She greeted. I really like it here, and I would be pleased to be the Luna of the Black Forest Pack. I think I can do a lot for this pack. It's beautiful, and it has already faced so many hardships in the past. This pack and the wolves here deserve the best, to flourish, and further become the strongest pack in the realm. I am certain that together we could achieve it, make the Black Forest a force to be reckoned with. She was indeed the Luna this pack needed, rational, goal-oriented, and ambitious. I also could feel that she had my pack's best interest at heart, and her work supporting the bed in her pack of origin was remarkable. Tyler did some research on each of those she-wolves and annoyed me into reading it. She was a great leader, had many administrative skills, and was a ranked she-wolf. She was also well known for her sense of integrity, reasonability, and diplomatic nature. Normally alphas could come on too strong on their packs and become authoritative if they didn't have a great luna to balance their behavior. Very dominant wolves tended to be choleric, even insensitive to others, and easily incited to anger sometimes. We had too much testosterone and strong guttural instincts, like being territorial, super-possessive, and aggressive. Which on one hand guaranteed the pack's survival, but on the other hand could make us inaccessible to most of the packmates. Thus, having a Luna with such skills as Katie's could guarantee the good functioning and development of the pack. Even the strongest of the Alphas needed a good Luna to lead alongside him, even our Alpha King became a much better leader after his Luna came to his life. I've waited to find my fated mate for decades, and I'm not naive enough to believe he would come to my life any time soon, if ever. Hence, I will move forward with my life and aspire to more elevating goals, such as helping this pack thrive. Having me as this pack's Luna can bring advantages to all of us, I would love the position, to do good for this pack, and help you forget a certain someone. Katie closed the distance between us. What? What are you talking about? I asked, narrowing my eyes at this cunning female. I have noticed that there is someone occupying your thoughts, Alpha. Your air of distraction and such aren't common for Alphas. Nevertheless, they are quite typical for any male 
who has his heart and desires taken. I assume she shouldn't be the one. She isn't the right Luna, but I could be such a Luna. Katie surprised me yet again with her words, her perspicacity. She was indeed very clever. I'll be honest with you. I could become your chosen mate for this pack because there is something great happening here and I want to be a part of it, help it to grow. But I think we have been getting along well so far and after we form our bond, we could grow to like each other. She added, It is a quite rational agreement, Katie, I replied. It would be great for my pack, but I was not sure if it would be as great for myself. I exhaled sharply. I am a rational and reasonable she-wolf, and I know what I want. Besides, you aren't unpleasant to the eyes. She smiled. Love is something that can grow, be built with time, given that the chemistry is already there. Leadership skills and rank, on the other hand, are things that one is born with, or not. Thus, it is the best way for both of us and this pack to trail. We could see how it goes, how well we can get along as co-leaders, and then decide on an agreement or not. Although, I'm confident it will work out just fine, she said as she held out her hand for me to take. I laced my fingers with hers slightly before she shook my hand. This she-wolf was down for business. That would be the perfect arrangement for this pack. Claire I was still very confused about what happened, and it made me avoid Tor for the next few days. It was a lame thing to do, I admit, but I needed time to myself, to think. I was happy and distracted taking care of my patients when I heard Sarah's voice. The next patient only comes in 30 minutes. You should stop trying to forget or avoid both of them. The hardest way to forget someone is to try that hard. She was right. It was hard to forget someone when the only thought in your mind was your need, your urge to forget them. Trying to forget him was thinking about him. I know. I've been thinking about what you said. I wish Tor and I could have had a chance. I guess I would only know if I try. Claire, I fear you will end up hurting him. He can't lose anyone else. He already lost too much. When your faded alpha comes back, your insides will melt and you will end up in his arms. I don't want to hurt him either, and I won't. Hunter is in the past. I hoped it was true. I wished I could believe it. But if I was with Tor, it would actually become my reality. Sometimes when you don't like your reality, you could make yourself a new one. Change your life. Create your own destiny. That's what I was trying to do. Be careful. I can't see both pups getting hurt, Sarah said as she held me in a warm embrace. I'll be very careful with his feelings. I promise. Be careful with your own feelings too, baby girl, Sarah added. After my shift was over, I went to the training grounds, knowing well that I would find him there. He was sparring with the Royal Pack Beta, while the Beta's older pup was watching them with bright eyes. This pup would definitely grow up to be a warrior, since both of his parents were remarkable fighters. Tor, I muttered, attracting his attention. He stopped fighting and took some steps in my direction. I can wait. I don't want to interrupt you, I said apologetically. We were about to finish up anyway. Joanna's nap time is soon. Beta Lucas said, looking at his five-year-old pup. She let out a cute yawn in response. She was an adorable pup, and of course, Sarah was mad about her and her little brother. Having children was not so common in any of the realms, due to the goddess's punishment for the centuries of war among the species. The situation improved a lot after a stable peace was achieved. However, the goddess was apparently one to hold grudges, so the royal beta and his mate were indeed blessed with their two beautiful children. I'm glad you decided to show up. I didn't want things to be awkward between us, Tor said, when he was only a few steps away from me. 
His strong and chiseled chest was glistening with droplets of sweat, and he was oozing a pure, manly allure. I... me neither. We are friends first. That's how it should be, I smiled. Before I could blink twice, the big alpha had me in his strong arms and comforting embrace. Alphas were so fast. I stayed there, enjoying his warmth. I was thinking, I'm still not sure about what to do, but I believe we should try it, starting with baby steps, slowly. It's a great idea. I've... I would love to try with you. Damn, Claire, I wish you were my fated mate. He replied. I wish you were my fated male, too. I felt a little pang jolting in my heart as I said those words. The mate bond was still there to remind me I couldn't forget the owner of the most magnetic gray eyes. Tonight? Let's have a real date. Dinner and a movie? He asked. It seems like a great idea. I replied without pulling out of his arms. 